Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Shah Abbas. Um, I'm with, Hu, with Imam Hussein TV uh, in Karbala, the lands of uh, Imam Hussein. Salam. Right across to me, I have uh, Abu Fazl Abbas's shrine. On my left hand side, I have God Abba Abdullah, the master, Imam Hussein Salam's shrine as well. Um, today, we're going to be discussing and we're going to be talking about what is the need of Imam Hussein in 21st century? What are the principles of Imam Hussein, the life legacy that things that he has done throughout his life that we need in 21st century and how we can use those life principles in our day to day life? Joined with me today is our guest uh, Khulud. Uh, so, Sister Khulud, please give us an introduction about yourself, where you come from, and what brings you to the holy lands of Karbala today. Uh, my name is Khulud. I am from Lebanon and I'm a nurse. Um, I, I came, obviously, the very obvious answer to what, what are you doing in Karbala or is um, I'm doing, I'm coming here for Ziyara, but mainly as well is for the experience because you can do Ziyara from your house and it's accepted, but the experience of Arabain is very unique. Absolutely. And it's something that everyone needs to experience in their lifetime. Um, the I, myself here, so we came. I came here for the, the Najaf to Karbala walk. Uh, it was a very humbling experience, uh, believe it or not, and um, which is which is which is which has been inspired by a man named a man called Hussein, grandson of Prophet Muhammad himself. Uh, so, Khul, tell me more about why do we need Imam Hussein in 21st century? So, when we talk about the need for someone, it means that this person presents something unique and special and something that's not been uh, presented before. So what, what is it that this man presents? What is that quality that he gives? I think from the way I see it and the way it is, is that Imam Hussein's commemoration or story um, triggers a personal change okay. inside of the, the person themselves, which then leads to reflection Yep. into the intellect and yep. then it um, it translates into practical actions to improve the world and that's why the story or the commemoration of Ashura is uh, is something that is starts uh, like a small seed inside of you and grows out into trees um, outside of you know out into the community okay absolutely so Obviously, everyone knows of what happened of uh, Day of Ashura, and everyone knows the final stand that Imam Hussein Islam made. But what is this about life principles? What are those qualities, individual qualities, uh, that we need at this time? So, apart from Ashura and the story of Karbala, um, sometimes we we forget to look at the life of Imam Hussein and at the the traits of Imam Hussein and at the actions of Imam Hussein and if we read or study the life of Imam Hussein we will find a lot of kindness and compassion related to charity work and kindness and help that he used to do stuff like um, taking food for the needy in the middle of the night to feed them um, which translate in our life time right now is that we we've got a lot of hunger problems oh, yeah, absolutely. i think we live in a world right now is it makes us sad it's, it's, it sickens us saying but we still have poverty we still have hunger it's like we live in 21st century. it's a day when people have reached moon uh, we, we, we we're sending shuttles to mars and we're achieving uh, we, we were breaking the boundaries of imaginations and we still have basic problems as as, as poverty or, or lack of clean water lack of clean water itself now how can imam hussein Islam help those problems that we face today so what makes it more absurd is that <clears throat> in the world the 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 unbalance that they're in, in a part of the world where it's very common to indulge um, and then there's a part of the world where like people are really hungry or have you know no access to clean water yes. um, and then if you want to talk about Hussein Hussein was in the middle he always spoke about 
being moderate do yes. not indulge and then he also was very passionate about helping those who do not have you know the the basic needs he was always socially aware of how important it is to help the people who have no one to help which yes. are the needy people i think one of the things that i've learned personally uh, myself was the on the day of our shura itself he sums up really nicely uh, is is the need now we always say that yes yeah, we are thirsty as you said the no ask for clean water but when Imam Hussein al -Islam did have a chance to get the water, the first thing he said was, I'm not going to drink the water, but I'm going to give water to my horse. Right? As animal rights. Yeah. So 1400 years ago, Imam Hussein al -Islam established animal rights, how to look after the animals. So there's a lot of um, values that we can uh, derive from Imam Hussein's uh, story or Imam Hussein's uh, commemoration that are very relevant to our present yeah. world. There's there's the 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 concept of forgiveness, forgiveness. where where yes. he accepted her. Um, it's it's a very rare uh, trait in our society where we're not very accepting of others who sin uh, or do something wrong while Imam Hussein accepted his enemy. Absolutely. Um, it, there's also the kindness that Imam Hussein and the compassion that he displays towards animals and towards other, uh, towards human beings that Hussein prayed for his enemies while they were killing him. Oh, wow. Which is, which is very I mean, you and I, we're just bare humans, and if we get hurt, we, we find it very difficult to forgive. Absolutely. And he, they were killing him, and he was praying for their hidayah. I so, think what we're going to do is we're definitely going to talk about those qualities. We're going to dissect those qualities, and we're going to, we're going to examine, and we're going to see how those qualities can be implemented in this world. Okay? Now, before I get to that, what I do want to know is, the, earlier on before the show, you did mention about the emotional and the practicality with the story of Imam Hussein. Do you want to expand on that? Yes, yeah, so when we look into Karbala uh, or Ashura or the story of Imam Hussein, we always look at it as an idea. Yeah. But the reality of Karbala is that it's a structure. We always look at it from one side. So when we look at Karbala, it has to be what it gives us and what, how we transcend it. So what it gives us is, you know, the, the, the crying, the latum, the lectures, all of these come to get together to bind and build a connection between your emotional intelligence and a moral compass that you have. In developmental psychology, there's a huge emphasis on empathy in children. And um, something as like, just very simple as taking your child at a certain age to a to an age appropriate majlis or explaining to your child during bedtime story what is Karbala and what happened in Karbala increases that sense of empathy inside of your child because he sees your love for Imam Hussein and thinks wow this is amazing my mom loves this person maybe I should also love him and then he starts learning the story and he builds a personal connection Maybe. with Hussein and that personal connection because of Imam Hussein's message which is help and kindness and upholding the rights and helping the the needy people and standing up for justice your child will build an, a, a strong moral compass through his emotional intelligence and that connection is something that you cannot break so in a way you will never have a child who will be okay with um, someone else other than him being bullied at school. Yeah. They will stand up and say, no, this is wrong. You don't do that, even so you're, if it's you're telling a me stranger. That the stories of Karbala gives empathy and emotion to the children from a very young age that you it teach teaches them. them yeah. Not to stand, not to stand and not do anything towards injustice because their role model, their love is Hussein and that that is always there with them. Absolutely. So will you message to uh, the young moms out there pretty much just to say as, as from a very young age teach the people the stories of a little bit. Yes. Teach the story of, uh, of what happened on the day of Ashura. Teach the story from a very... I, I remember this when I was young. Um, I'll share with you. I think one of the things what my mother used to do was uh, when she's cooking food she used to play uh, the poetry 
uh, of Imam Hussein, and I didn't understand what he meant at the, at the time. And she used to tell me what happened, and she's it was like a majalis in the house, and that's how I grew knowing. And I knew the value of water from a very young age. Yeah. I knew the value of humanity from a very young age. Had my mother not told me to respect the elders, had my mother not told me is to give when you see someone is needy, had you had my father. He, he did the exact same. I'll show you the story of what my father should do when, he was a, when I was a child. He wants to give money to the poor, but he doesn't do it. He gets me to do it. He takes money out from his pocket. Yeah. He goes to me and goes, go and give it. And I'm like, you could have just done it yourself, right? Why are you telling me to do it? It's like you're delegating your job to me. Now I understand it. After a very long period of time, my father did that so that I understand the idea of giving it's from a very young age. And it also increases your sense of achievement. It, it makes you, when you give that money to the needy, you feel like you've done something good and good inside of you grows because you feel the need to do it again Absolutely. and again and again. So now the practicality. So if you're connected emotionally yeah. to Imam Hussain, so, I mean, inshallah, it pleases God as well. So and one of the things, one, one of the things what the God loves is uh, people who love the Ahlul Bayt. People who love the Prophet and their family doing these actions or doing these arakans are one of the ways to get closer to God. Allah, so Allah, apart Allah. from you know doing your wajibat, the salah and the siram and all of that stuff, I think building the moral compass, which you don't really need to go that far. It's just look at the imams' lives, not just Imam Hussein, all of the imams' lives. You can derive so many values that are very universal. Absolutely. Kindness and, and, and helping and forgiving, they're very universal. They're, they're needed everywhere and they're preached in every religion. So these universal values, you are raised every Ashura on them up to till it's a reminding, Arba'in. isn't it? So it's, every time you go to a mosque, yeah, and you every, learn every, yeah. Every year you learn a new value, you learn a new thing and after after a while these things become embedded in you, in who you are. In your, sub, in your uh, subconscious uh, yeah. in mind itself, so it's basically for example you see someone out in the streets hunger, you would see that but if it was not subconsciously in you, you would just walk by that. It would be very difficult it to ignore difficult. that person, yeah, it would be very, it, exactly. it, you would think if Imam Hussein, if it was Imam Hussein, he would do this. And that's that is brought up with Constant you from reminder. your ch childhood exactly. when your when your parents teach exactly. you about Imam Hussein and what he's done and how he's done it, or Imam Ali and his life story. You grow up with these values where, like, I cannot ignore this because my Imam would not ignore Absolutely, it. Yeah. So this builds up into. Um, an energy inside of you, you feel like you want to do more. Yeah. You feel like you need to change the world into a better place. Absolutely. And you take that energy and you need to find a way to use it for the benefit <laughs> of the world. Absolutely. That love of Hussein is tr translated into something practical. And we always say, um, the biggest thing that Imam Hussein rose for was not the Khilafah as in that he didn't want the throne, he did not care about being, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen. What he rose for was social injustice. Yeah. When the Ahl al-Kufa, they, when they wrote letters to him telling him of the injustice that was going on, that's when he decided to come up and say no to Yazid and to actually go to Karbala. So it's social injustice. So what we can do practically is seek social reform. Absolutely. So that, so from the emotions. So what you're telling is is that we are emotionally connected, and it's a matter of converting that emotions into practical aspects through reflection, through the intellect, it, emotional until using that as a boundary to convert that emotions, the connections that we have with about the Allah into practical elements of things that we can do. Now to get to that stage of emotional and practical, you're also saying that from a very young age we should start practicing it to ourselves, to our children. So when we have children, from a very young age you're telling them what's happening, you're making them do the act of kindness like the story of my, what my father did. Yes. He's telling me and giving people from a very young age, telling me and serving the people and when we have people guest over, from a very young age training them. And that's key, that's very important as you said earlier on. Now, Moving on to the, the life principles of why do we need Imam Hussein on 21st century right now. So 
his principles, the, li the life principles, I think one of the principles that I think we should dissect and, and start at the very beginning that which the world needs right now is forgiveness. Yes. Right? So that was a story I think you were speaking about earlier on about, about her. Um, if my memory serves right, is the, the story of her was this man was against Imam Hussein. His, his, his whole ideology, his whole principle was no. I'm going to not let Imam Hussein get to uh, the water. The this water. man stopped Imam Hussein from getting to the water at the beginning of the 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 Battle of Kar Karbala, um, and this man uh, was the leader of the army against Imam Hussein. But at the same time, when he reflected on himself and realized that he's in the wrong camp. He and came down to Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein did not even blame him one second for choosing the wrong camp. He accepted him immediately. He forgave him, he forgave him and accepted him immediately. I think that's a huge thing for our, our audience to understand and realize. One thing, the need for Imam Hussein in the 21st century, the biggest need is a forgiveness. I think we can, we can, we know a lot of people who have not spoken to their family in ages because they don't like them. We've not. We've we've got brothers who fight with one another. We've got siblings. We've got parents not speaking to their children, or children not speaking to their parents. We've got friends who just said harsh things and just moved apart. We've got cousins far away in oceans, and they're not even speaking to them. Forgiveness is key. You want to get too close to God, realize forgiving. It's a bridge between you and Abba Abdullah. Let's build a bridge. First lesson that we've learned today. Is forgiveness and how we can use in practicality let's start you take the first step and hopefully the second person take the second step even if not you've done your job you've crushed your soul by asking for forgiveness with that person individually and inshallah if he if you both can put your differences behind and we have bigger and better things to achieve in the world moving on to the next part was the needy so we, we'd say about what do we need Imam Hussein 21st century and one of the things that Imam Hussein said was as his stand was for the needy. Yeah. Right? Do you want to explain on what is it about the needy that Imam Hussein did? How did he help the needy of his time? And how can we use that to help in the in 21st century? So the message of Hussein and the universal message of helping others is kindness and compassion and putting yourself in the other person's shoes and, and helping them through feeling their pain and Imam Hussein used to um, be very aware and very very um, sensitive towards the neglected parts of society especially the homeless and the elderly and, and the orphans as well and like, the orphans and his father has got a number of stories about how Imam Ali used to talk about take the, the father of the orphans right yes so um, what Imam Hussein used to do there's a story that always like strikes um, he, Imam Hussein was going through the market on his horse and um, a group of homeless people were having a meal and he and they asked him to join them um, Imam Hussein immediately said I cannot take your food but what I can do is take you home with me and give you dinner so we can have food at mine and he did that Imam, wow. he, he never he said I can't take your food because it's sadaqa but I'll take you with me and I'll give you food in your in my house wow. and he took them and he sat down with them on the floor and had a meal with them it was it wasn't just about food for Imam Hussein as well it's not just about feeding them that story you just said is inspired millions in Karbala it today has. so when the people were doing the walk from Najaf to Karbala on the Arbain walk people get stopped on the road dragged into their houses yes she said you're the Zawar Hussein you're the, you, you're the person traveling from Najaf to Karbala walking. You need to come to my house, sit down, eat, and then go. Hussein Ibn Ali has inspired these people to an act of kindness. Feed the needy. It's phenomenal. The, the, the dedication of uh, the servants of Imam Hussein on the way from Najaf to Karbala is so humbling. So the culture where there's, there, there, there's, they've got nothing to give, but they have so much Absolutely. So when it comes down to the need, so that's, I'm going to break it down to three elements. Number one, the need for food. Right? There are multiple organizations that have been inspired to feed the homeless. Like Number two. 
right, number two we can discuss on is blood. Again, the number of organizations in the world has been inspired to give blood. Blood is key. Number three is the orphans. As Mama said, has inspired organizations to, to, do the, to help the orphans. So let's start with the first one, which is the food. So why is food essentially important, the nutrition and, and the day-to-day -day running? And what has Imam Hussein done 1400 years ago that is inspiring people doing today? So uh, there's a saying by Imam Hussein that roughly says that the, the true virtue is helping someone that can, you cannot benefit from, that he has no yeah. you have no use of their, their uh, actions, but you're helping them anyways. Uh, and that is how Imam Hussein lived. He never looked at things the way, uh, as in like what serves my path. It was help. It was all about giving and giving and giving. Um, Food-wise, we've, we've spoken about his his care for the elderly. He used to go feed them. He he used to mm. take the homeless to his house and feed them. And in our in our society now, it's very relevant. Homelessness is a big problem in every part of the world, even in first world countries, places like London, there's about 60,000 like, homeless people on the streets of London. Um, organizations like Who's Hussein, uh, who are inspired by Hussein, uh, do take action and try to help them as much as possible by providing foods and drink and other facilities. Um, when it comes to blood, um, there's a verse in the Quran that says, uh, or something or roughly says whoever uh, helps um, a soul live it's as if he uh, helped saved the humanity. whole saved humanity yes and uh, and blood is uh, is a it's it's like a 15 minute sit down they they put a really scary needle into you and they drain some blood they take about 470 mls which is nothing but it can actually save a life it's you save three people by donating once. Wow. So it's quite important wow. as well. And then orphans, obviously we all know from Prophet Muhammad up to up to Imam Ali, up to Imam Hussein, uh, and all of the uh, uh, Imams, how important it is to take care of orphans and how important it is to be gentle with Absolutely. them. It's not just about their physical needs or their food or their money. It's about their emotional yeah, needs absolutely. as well. I think there's many hadith, there's a hadith as well where Prophet Muhammad, one of the things he said was, you place your hand on the head of an orphan, the amount of hair that child has got, you'll be blessed. I think one of the most striking stories about Imam Ali uh, is um, when he was Khalifa, he used to uh, roam the streets of um, the country to see how you know the, the situation is. And one time uh, he saw a child crying in the corner. So he came up to him and he said, uh, why are you crying? And he said, my friends are, won't let me play with them. Um, and he asked him why? And he said, because I'm an orphan. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a father. So Imam Ali said, okay, you go play with them. And when they ask you about your father, you tell them Ali bin Abi Talib is my Masha, father. Wow. And that is, I think it's inspiring. chilling. It's, it's something that Every time I remember, every time I say, every time I hear, it gives me that like rush inside of me about the kindness that Ahl al-Bayt display simply with their words, simply with being there. That emotional sense of having a father, so it's Ali bin Abi Talib, is, is just impossible to Amazing. fathom. So my dear brothers and sisters, um, we've learned many life principles of Hussein ibn Ali, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad. Um, he, we are in the sitting lands of Karbala and the, the topic for today was the need of Imam Hussein in the 21st century. We can go on and on and on about what is it that we need, but we emphasized on two, two principles of Imam Hussein. One was forgiveness, to please learn to forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Number two is need, helping the people in need help the people to feed the people in need, help the homeless people, help your family, help your relatives, help the people giving blood. Your blood can save three lives. Again, you're doing something that's saving other people's lives. One of the biggest things you can do. Number three, help the orphans. Again, this is exactly what Ahl Bayt, Imam Hussain, his father, his grandfather, were all about helping the orphans. Khulud, 
I would like to take my time on behalf of Imam Hussein TV. I say thank you very much for coming on the show, and in, inshallah, your uh, ziyarat may get accepted. Um, and if you have anything that you would need, please give us a shout. And my dear brothers and sisters, thank you for watching us, and khuda afis.